Yeah, good day, YouTubers. Uh, Spanner Man again here with another video. Hope you enjoy the video today. Please subscribe to the channel. Any comments, thumbs up. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Yeah, good day, YouTubers. Uh, Spanner Man again here with another video. Today we're going to have a shoot out uh, of the two still. Uh, depth gauges or raker gauges, whatever you want to call them, and that's the uh, still FL4, and that is the still constant depth gauge that's available. So we'll talk about both gauges, uh, the pros and cons of both, and, uh, and and let you know what which one that I think you should be using. But first of all, you really need to understand attack angle and to get your head around that, and then a lot of the geometry that I'm, I'm going to talk about will start to make a lot of sense. So I can give a couple of examples of attack angles, and I'm sure you'd understand those ones. The first would be a carpenter's uh, chisel. So if we've got a, a flat piece of timber, and we've got one here actually. Uh, so he, here's a flat bit of timber here. Here's the end grain here. And if we have a chisel and we try to punch the chisel in it doesn't go in very good but if we lay the chisel down on a low angle then it penetrates and takes off a, a slither of timber so that's referred to as attack angle also if we've got a compound saw a circular saw it's got tungsten carbide teeth the teeth come in at a certain angle so that's another example of attack angle a third example is you'll see the professional wood choppers in competitions still have one where they use a handsaw. Another one they use a special uh, hotted up uh, uh, chainsaw with an expansion chamber on it and they're cutting uh, through timber. And the other competition where they'll have the axeman standing on a log and he'll proceed to chop that log uh, and he uses his axe at a 45 degree angle on the left and a 45 degree angle on the right. He'll cut halfway in, turn around the other side, and he'll do the same on the other side till he cuts through. 45 degree angle has proven to be the most efficient so that the axe enters the wood at the uh, best attack angle. So that is uh, some examples of attack angles. You've also got them on metal lays especially if you're doing stainless steel, you'll find out that if the metal is rotating around like that, that you come in at a certain angle so that you get less vibration and chatter. So attack angles are very good. Now, a brand new chain has an attack angle. So whether it's 3.8 low profile or standard 3.8 or 404, they all got raker gauges, as you would know, and roughly they set them at the factory at 0.65 of a millimetre. So they're stamped out on the machine and the raker depth is about 0.65. So the little tiny flat gauge that still manufacture like this has got all these little windows on them and, you know, you can see different degrees and angles and you've got side plate angles as well. But you have this little opening here and you'll see 0.65 of a millimetre stamped on there and that's the depth. The original gauge of this was invented by Joseph Burford Cox over in Portland, Oregon, about 1953, as well as a Cox chipper chain in the same era, and put a worldwide patent on it. The only difference between uh, the uh, Joseph's uh, Oregon type gauge that he had two ends on one of them. Uh, he had uh, 25 thou on one end and 30 thou on the other. So 25 thou being 0.65 and 30,000 being 0.75 of a millimetre. So that was the invention, and everyone just copied that. So the biggest problem that you have with that type of gauge is that it starts measuring 0.65 of a millimetre, but by the time you get to the end of the life, that 0.65 of a millimetre will end up at 1.1 millimetres in depth. So... If you were to measure a tooth, uh, you would find out from the end of life, so you would find out that 
if you've got 0.65 of a millimetre from brand new at end of the life, you're going to have a total of 1.1 millimetres. So if that makes sense. So brand new, this is the tooth, this is the raker, 0.65 of a millimetre. By end of life, it's going to be down to 1.1 millimetre in depth. So, and, and that's going to affect the attack angle. So the attack angle is from this point to that point. And that's the attack angle. Brand new chain has an attack angle of about five degrees. Hardwood is generally uh, from five to seven degrees attack angle. Six is probably what you want to aim for. And softwood is from seven to nine. So probably eight's what you want to aim for there, but you're not going to find a rake of gauge is going to give you an attack angle of uh, eights or nines or sevens for that matter. So the biggest problem that you're going to have with this type of gauge is, yes, you're going to get a measurement of 0.65 of a millimetre from the very beginning. And it's only ever going to keep that distance, that 0.65 of a millimetre, all the way to the end. But another thing happens, and that's what affects the attack angle. So if we were to look at the distance between the tooth and the raker. So if we look at the distance between here, it's approximately on a 3.8 chain, about 6.3 millimetres. But as we file the tooth back, we file an additional 6.5 millimetres. So that blows out the distance between the raker and here over 12.5 mil. So what happens in that 12.5 millimetres is that this angle deteriorates and drops down to a pathetic 2.6 degrees, which is what you see on here, 2.6. That is the whole problem with attack angle. 2.6 degrees is not 100% efficiency at cutting timber. It may only be 50% efficiency, which means you're going to go so slow th using that. So we've ground... We did an experiment. This is a brand new piece of chain taken off a roll. What we did was grind down this tooth to three millimetres in length. We then put this flat gauge on top and we filed uh, the raker down to the correct depth according to the gauge. We did that on four teeth because this type of gauge sits on four teeth. And this can be one of the problems by sitting on four teeth. It could be a little bit up this end or a little bit there. So sometimes it mightn't sit perfectly flat because the teeth don't sit perfectly flat because some teeth can be slightly longer than the others. But it's only by a small margin that I'm talking about. But nonetheless, that type of gauge cannot maintain a constant attack angle. The attack angle will deteriorate to 2.6 degrees by the time you get down to the little uh, tiny triangle, which is end of life. And this is where you'll get a lot of people that will discard the chain uh, much earlier than that little tiny triangle that you see. Some people are probably discarding the chain uh, just below half, maybe 60% of its life. They've used 60% of the chain and they discard it because it's not cutting as good. And that's the reason why it doesn't cut as good, because of uh, it, it's, it's not a linear uh, type uh, uh, attack angle. It deteriorates. So what happened in the early 60s, a man by the name of Ray Carlton must have uh, thought of ways of improving this attack angle. And he invented... Uh, the progressive depth gauge and put a worldwide patent on it. Those of you that may not know Ray Carlton, maybe you've heard of Carlton Chain, same guy. So that worldwide patent went on. It was a progressive depth gauge. He named that file a plate. You can still buy some of that old stock floating around, would you believe? Because I think uh, when Carlton got sold got sold to Oregon, and I think Oregon renamed, got, got brought out by a company called Blount, I think it was called, and they stopped making the uh, filer plates. I, I don't know why, but 
that was picked up by West Coast Saws in America. They now manufacture, uh, which looks pretty much like the uh, Carlton Filer plate uh, because uh, the patent has well and truly lapsed. We're talking about over 60 years ago, 60 years. So if the normal little still flat gauge really doesn't give you a good attack angle, which is critical to chainsaw cutting efficiency if you want 100% out of your chain, the only other option that you've got is that you need to go to one of these progressive gauges like this that are made by still. These are only been on the market for oh, 12, 13 years. Uh, they originally brought them out. They didn't look like this. They were on the end. They had a roller uh, guide mechanism, a little bit like what uh, uh, Husqvarna have, and they had this mechanism that was on a plate that slid out. So you had a roller guide that you'd put your file in and it would hold it at 30 degrees. So still brought them out. I think you can still buy them, uh, but you can't buy them in this country because I tried to get one. But anyway, so this type of gauge is based exactly on Ray Carlton's uh, progressive depth gauge. You've got two windows. The one up the top's a hard setting. The one down the bottom is the soft setting. So a brand new chain has an attack angle of about five degrees. So if we were to place this on the hard setting, you would find out if you ran the file over the top, it may take a hair off it, if 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 anything at all. But if you put it on the soft setting, it will reduce the rake of depth to about 0.75 of a millimetre, and that will have an attack angle of six to low sixes. Now, when you get to the end of the life... If you remember before, I said that the constant flat gauge would remove, if we were to measure, we had a total depth of about 1.1 millimetres. So on the hard setting on here, we have about 1.35 millimetres. And on the soft setting, we have a setting of about 1.5 millimetres. So the soft setting is much, much more aggressive. And the attack angle as I said, on the hard setting will be around the fives to, to, to mid fives and the soft setting is going to be around the sixes to mid sixes. It depends on how you file, whether you put a little bit of pressure on uh, as to that fluctuation, but approximately around those numbers there. So it means that when you get to the end of the life, and we did an experiment on on. Uh, this experiment that we did on the flat gauge, I've just dropped it. The experiment that we did on this flat gauge here only gave us a attack angle of 2.7 degrees. we done exactly the same experiment using this gauge and we got five, I've just got the numbers there, we've got five sorry, uh, I think we had 5.9 degrees attack angle on the hard setting, and we had about 6.4 on the soft setting, so not far off the 6.5. Do get variation. Please remember that the reason that you do get a bit of variation when you're doing all these experiments, and we've got the digital uh, uh, caliper mounted on here so that we get fairly accurate results, while the digital uh, caliper will give accurate results, one of the other problems that you do encounter trying to do all these experiments is that you're dealing with a piece of chain and, and the chain has got all linkages and bearings in it, so it moves all over the place. So it's not something that you can measure 100% dead accurate, whereas if you were to measure this piece of block, this solid block, you'd get a very accurate reading because there's no movable parts. There's very little room for error except in the gauge maybe itself. Whereas when you're measuring teeth, they're all joined by rivets. So you do get some sort of movement there, even though that you may not feel it or see it. There will be, because remember, the digital Werner is me measuring uh, one hundredth of a millimetre. So very, very accurate. So let's just uh, recap. For those people out there that are using the still flat type gauge it's going to work okay for the first say the beginning of the life of the chain from the first time that you start to file the chain if you've got an attack angle of about five 
you'll never ever get an attack angle higher than five. You will find out that your attack angle using this gauge will be reduced till you get to a low attack angle of around two and a half. That's what's going to happen and your efficiency of your chainsaw will drop off. However, if you're using one of these constant depth gauges, you'll start off with a brand new chain on the hard setting of around about five. If you decide to put the soft setting on a brand new chain, which is what I normally do, you will have an attack angle in the low sixes, thereabouts. So I always like to start off on the low sixes. So I, I tend to use a soft setting. Uh, and that's probably about it. So the clear winner to me is the Stuhl Progressive Depth Gauges. They do sell them in Husqvarna. So Husqvarna have had them out for a long, long time. Husqvarna, to my knowledge, don't sell this type of gauge. They only sell the uh, Progressive Slanted Gauges. And the Husqvarna are not as aggressive, so they're least aggressive. Uh, I have done some measurements, and I found out that using the Husqvarna from brand new, that it's below 5, around the 4.7, and certainly it doesn't go much more than, uh, you know, high 4s. Unfortunately, that's that's about all you'll get out of the Husky gauge, which is still okay. It's not that bad. It's not as bad as 2.7 as, as what you'll get on the flat gauge. The only other thing I'll say about the Husqvarna gauge is that they're a little bit softer in their metal. They're not as hardened. The steel gauges are hardened to a Rockwell of 62, so you can run the file straight over the top of them. Don't even worry about the Oregon one. The latest ones that are coming out of the factory out of Oregon, which are out of China, they're made out of mild steel. You can't run a file over the top of that. You'll just file it away. But the Oregon one is a little bit different. The Oregon one is about the same length of this, and it has a little slot in the middle. Uh, you certainly can't use the file on that. You'll file it away. Unfortunately, I don't know. Well, I do know. They're, they're only doing that because it's cheaper. The original Oregon uh, in the patent, if you were to read it, would tell you that Joseph Cox uh, did harden the original Oregon gauges. And I guess they're just sort of selling them to be a lot cheaper at the moment. And they're made out of soft, mild steel, so you'll file them away. And they're the same deal. They only remove in uh, 20, 25 thou or... 0.65 of a millimetre. They don't even make their original one where you had 25 thou at one end and 30 thou on the other. The only other thing that I would say that if you do like using this gauge, if you do get one for the 404 chains, they actually make these in three sizes, 0.45 of a millimetre, all right, so you've got 0 0.45, 0 0.65, which is this one for 3H chain. The 0 0.45 is for a quarter inch uh, a Pico chain. And the 0.85 is for the 404 chain. So if you really did like using this type of uh, gauge, you could always get the 404 version, which is going to remove uh, a lot more, which may sort of give you... Uh, an improvement of 2.7 you might be more at an attack angle of round round low fours so you could possibly sort of get away with that if you really wanted to but my personal uh, choice is that I'd go straight for this particular gauge but even if you've got an attack angle of low fours you're still going to cut reasonably good it's just that what I'm trying to tell you is to get optimal cutting 100% cutting efficiency out of your chain provided that you've sharpened it correctly at the correct angle and it's razor sharp and you've got your depth gauges set using the progressive gauge that chain is razor sharp it will cut very good provided you went to the trouble and effort and used a progressive depth gauge and set the rakers at the correct height Look, there's probably not my, much else I could say. I think I mentioned just to briefly recap that if you were using this particular gauge at end of life, the raker depth from 
being brand new to end of life would have a maximum length of 1.1 millimeters. So, and on the progressive depth gauge, you would have a maximum of 1.35 millimeters on hard, and on the soft setting, you would have a maximum of 1.5 millimeters in depth. So, just for those, uh, just to briefly tell you that the distance that I'm referring to is this, this is 0.65 of a millimeter from this point to this point at brand new. On a constant depth gauge, you only, by the time you file back to this point, you'll measure 1.1 millimeters in depth. On a still slanted gauge, you'll start off at the 0.65 millimeter from here to here. When you get to end of life on the hard setting, it'll be 1.35 millimeters. And on the soft setting, it'll be 1.5 millimeters. So you can see on the soft setting, on the slanted gauges, on this gauge, if you've got a maximum depth of 1.1 millimeters, and on a, a soft setting, on a slanted gauge, you've got 1.5 millimeters. So it's 0 0.4 of a millimeter uh, in depth. And that one, that 0.4 millimeter gives you that extra uh, angle and brings that angle back, uh, that attack angle to uh, fives or low sixes. Look, it's been 21 minutes I've been talking about this. I hope it's sunk in. There's been some great comments. There's a lot of people that... Uh, opened their eyes i wish i knew about this stuff 20 years ago but i didn't and i i'd been using one of these gauges for the last 20 years and the moment that i swapped to one of these gauges i really noticed a difference in my cutting efficiency i was going out there spending half the amount of time cutting the timber down because my saws work that good and that's what happens when some people put a brand new chain on they go oh wow this is cutting great because the depth is 0.65 of a millimeter and the attack angle is five and if they're using the normal flat gauge their attack angle can deteriorate to what this is around the 2.5 mark and that's why a lot of people uh, don't realize it but that may say oh I think I better get a new chain this one I've sharpened up it just doesn't seem to be doing the job anymore it's not because you didn't sharpen it incorrectly it's because the distance between the raker and the tooth has increased to almost double and the attack angle has dropped down to 2.5 degrees and your efficiency of your cutting has gone out the window look thanks for watching give us a thumbs up if there's any comments i really do appreciate the comments because uh that's what keeps me going and doing more videos thanks for watching bye for now